Welcome to Music Generation with Transformers. I'm Oran Reznik, and today we'll learn about the main parts of the code for multi-head self-attention, the heart of the transformer, and we will explore how it works in the process. We will also look at the model design and see how it implements both local and relative embeddings. Finally, we'll hear music created at several parts of the training process, just for fun. By the way, I'm assuming basic knowledge at PyTorch, Deep Learning, and NLP. I'm also encouraging you to stop and look at the code whenever you want to take a closer examination of it and understand of all, the, all of the illustrations that accompany this presentation. All right, let's go over the forward function of the model and slowly dive deeper. First, each word in our, let's call it sentence, is converted into a matching embedding vector. This happens using PyTorch's embedding layer. And you can see here how you can define it in the init function. Basically, it takes two arguments, the number of tokens, unique words in the vocabulary, and wanted size of the embedding vector for each word. Here, we store it in a variable called numTokens. I will explain why there is a minus three there later. These embedding vectors will change through training to better represent each word. But wait, that's a music generation model. Why do you talk about words? Well, that's a great question. In this model, the data is represented as a list of vectors. Each vector is of 88 length, where each element in the vector matching one of the ATF keys and the piano. If the element's value is one, it represents a pressed key and zero if not. Therefore, Every combination of keys pressed at the same time in the data is considered a single word, and each ordered list of them is a music piece, which is parallel to a text file. Note that this representation loses the information on tempo and strength of pressing, which makes the model's job way easier on one hand, but also limits how well we can get to the level of, real of a real composer. Still, the results sound really nice. Adding positional embeddings. These are needed so the model will have a sense of the order of the information, which is important both in music as well as in language. Here we achieve this by appending a small vector to the word's embedding vector. This addition is based on the position on the of the word, not the word itself. So each word in position 3 will always get the same addition, and same goes for any other position. Since their size is 3, we had to remove 3 from the embedding size itself in the previous slide. You can see how the positional embeddings were created. The argument requires grad is needed for letting PyTorch know that it needs to update the values of the vectors to minimize the loss. And the repeat command is needed to get the position embeddings vectors match the size of the batch one copy per, tra per training example in the batch. Now, the best way to define a part of the model architecture that repeats itself is by using a for loop with lists of layers. And the, the this way you can define the model in less lines of code and easily experiment with different number of repetitions by having it as an input at model creation. Each such block is composed of a batch norm layer followed by multi-head self-attention layer, that I will explain soon. The way to define those lists of layer is using the module list command. Now, let's dive deeper into the inner workings of multi-head self-attention. This layer is implemented as a model of its own, with its own init and forward functions. The idea of the multi-head part of the multi-head self-attention is that each head has the exact same structure and function as the others, apart from the weights values themselves, and each value on its own part of the input vector. So if you have three heads and input vectors for the layer of size 90, each head gets 30 elements to work with. This way, each head can specialize on a different aspect of the data. At the end of the layer, the output of all of the heads are combined to a single output. 
that goes on to the next layer. Step one of the self-attention part of multi-head self-attention is mapping each word vector to Q, K, and V. Most, more detailed is that each embedding vector of a word is multiplied by three matrices to create three new vectors, query vector, Q, key vector, K, and value vector, V. Therefore, if our sequence has three words, we will have nine vectors after this step in each head. This happens in each head separately, so if we have three heads, we actually get 27 vectors. To create these new vectors, we need three matrices. Now, X, the input, has the shape batch size, sequence length, embedding size. We transpose the outcome so that the shape of the resulting matrix will match our needs from it later. So, if WQ is the matrix that converts word vectors to query vectors, this is how the matrix multiplication will look like. Now we have to multiply the queries with the keys. We have to take the matrix of query vectors, Q, and the same shaped matrix of key vectors, K, and multiply them to get the weights of the value vectors. Now pay attention because this is the heart of self-attention. By taking the dot product of the query of word I and the key of word J, the model knows how important word J is to the role of word I in the sentence, or melody in this case. Here you can see the matrix multipli multiplication itself in matrix notation and the code for it. The most important takeaway is that in the result, the dot product of the query vector of word, for example, 2, with key vector of, for example, word 3, gives the score that measures how much word 2 attends to word 3. Here, in the music generation model, it's also beneficial to add a relative positional embedding. Because knowing if a word is first, second, and so on is important, but for music composition, it's also important to know what is the relative distance of a word from all other words. So we want a positional embedding that will not always be the same for the same location. For example, same embedding for the third word always. But if the same word is the same for word I and position J, word I and position J plus one, word J and position Z, and so on. Every word gets a different embedding to, for each position in the sequence. There are several ways to implement this. I went with something Fairly simple, replacing WQ with E, uh, the embedding matrix that is always the same, regardless of the words in the sentence and their ordering. Now you have two sets of scores, one from Q multiplied by K, and one from Q multiplied by E, the relative distance embedding matrix. We just add those scores one to another, to get to the final scores, because those matrices have the same shape. Afterwards, it's important to mask the scores. This is important because when the model predicts word three in a given input sequence of 30 words, we don't want it to know about words four, five, and so on, because we want it to predict and not just have the answer. We do this by creating an upper triangular matrix with values minus infinity and sort of adding it to the scores. This way, the softmax that we will perform over the scores soon will convert the minus infinity to zero, thus letting no word attend to the words after it. Afterwards, we perform softmax on the scores to make them all non-negative and sum up to one. Then we have to combine the value vectors based on our calculated scores. Basically, we are taking a weighted average of the value vectors for each word in our sentence. You can see the code for doing this using matrix multiplication. The model architecture that I've used with my relatively limited computer power and time is an embedding layer that converts the word to an embedding vector, 
then adding a positional encoding, three repetitions of batch norm followed by multi-head self-attention with eight heads, each on a 30 element dimension size, and finally, a fully connected decoder that just maps to the prediction output. Now, just for fun, let's hear the model through different steps during training. Without any training, start, starting with a prompt composed by a human, Okay, let's stop it here. It sounds terrible, and that's no surprise. It had no training. With just 10 minutes of training, we get this. If you listened really hard, you might be able to imagine there's something better here. But basically, it's it's still just random sounds. After one hour of training, we get this. We start to get some sense of structure, tempo, and what chords and, and notes goes well after which other notes. But it's still pretty bad. After five hours of training, starts to get more harmonious and structured, which is an improvement. After 10 hours of training, we can already see the melody is way more structured and much more fitting the human prompt. And finally, after two days of training, we get this. Which sounds pretty well even though it's obviously not even close to a human compu composer. That being said, with more computing power, bigger model, more training time, and more data, this can be way, way better. And if you have those resources, I encourage you to try it out. Anyway, that's all for now. Uh, if you like this and thought this was helpful to you in your deep learning journey, please subscribe and join the channel. I will try to upload more project more projects soon. Thank you and goodbye.